Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We from group one on to present about capacitive sensor. Next. Capacitance capaci capaci and distance. Non-contact capacitive sensors work by measuring changes in an electrical property called capacitor. Capacitor describes how to conductive objects with a space between them respond to a volta voltage difference applying to them. When a voltage is applied to the conductors, an electric field is created between them causing positive and negative charges to collect on each object. If the polarity of the voltage is versus reverse, the charges will also reverse. Capacitive sensor use an alternative voltage which causes causes the charges to continually reverse their position. The moving of the charges created an alternating electric current which is detected by the sensor. The amount of current, current flow is determined by the capacitance and the capacitance is determined by the area and proximity of the conductive objects. Larger and closer object cause greater current than smaller and more distant, distant objects. The capacitance is also affected, affected by the type of non non-conductive non -conductive material is in the gap between the objects. Technologically speaking, techni technically speaking, the capacitance is directly proportional, proportional to the surface area of the objects and the dielectric the, the the, the electric constant of the material between them and inversely proportional to the distance between them. In typical capacity, capacitive sensing appli application, the probe or sensor is one of the conductive objects and the target object is the other. Using capacity sensor to sense plastic and other insulators is discussed in the non-conductive target section. The size of the next, the size of the sensor and the target, target are some, some uh, chart, some uh, to to be constant as in the material between them. Therefore, therefore, any change in any change in capacitance is is a result of a change in the distance between the probe and the target. The electronics are calibrated to generate specific voltage changes for correspond, corresponding changes in capacitance. The this voltage these voltages are scaled to re represent specific changes in distance. The amount of voltage change for a given about Given amount of distance change in col in col colored the sensitivity. A common 
sensitivity setting is one point V per one hundred one point one point zero voltage per one hundred one hundred micrometer. That means that for every one hundred micrometer change in distance, the output voltage changes exactly 1.0 voltage with this calibration a plus 2 voltage change in the output means that the target has moved 200 micrometer closer to the probe measuring non conductor capacitive sensors are most often used to measure the change in position of a conductive target. But con capacitive sensors can be effective in measuring prison, prison distance, di density, thickness, and location of non conductors as well. Non conductive materials like plastic have, have a different dielectric constant than air. The, the dielectric constant determines how a non-conductive material effect, affects a uh, composition between two conductors. When a non-conductor is inserted inserted but between the probe and a stationary if reference target the sensory field pass through the material to the grounded target the presence of the non-conductive material changes the the let the, the the electric and therefore changes the capacitance. The capacitance will change in relationship to the thickness or the density of the material. Sensitivity. Sensitivity indicates how much the output voltage changes as a result of a change in the gap between the target and the capacitive sensor a common uh, uh, a common sensitivity is 1 volt in 1 voltage per 0 0.1 mm this means that for for every 0 0.1 mm of change in the gap the output voltage will change one volt. When the output voltage is plotted again, the gap size, the slope of the of the line is the sensitivity. Uh, okay, now I pass to uh, Fidaus. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, now uh, I will um, I will explain about the transient response. Okay, the okay next. Okay, the capacitive sensor are non-contact by its design. That is, they are able to precisely measure the position or displacement of an object without touching it. Because of this, the object being measured will be will not be distorted or damaged and target motions will be not with them. Additionally, they can measure high frequency motions because no part of the sensor needs to stay incorrect is the object making them ideal for vibration measurements or high speed or high speed production line applications 
next is the range of the stand of distance of capacitive sensor the range of a capacitance sensor is this is di dictated by the diameter or area by the sensor the larger the area the larger measurement range measurement range is typically specified starting when the probe is touching the target at this point the output from the amplifier is zero volt when the gap is increased the to sorry when the gap is increased to equal the full scale measurement range of the capacitive system the amplifier output is 10 volts okay now um we can see a figure this figure shows the capacitive probe operating range in theory the probe can operate anywhere between two extremes however it is not recommended to operate below 10 percent of the gap with this said the ideal operating the ideal operating of stand off distance is somewhere between 5 volts to 7 volts which will allow the target to move closer to further away from the prop without going out the range okay next we will i will explain about the resolution of the capacity sensor the resolution of a capacitive sensor is defined as the smallest amount of distance change that can be reliably measured by a specific system. Capacitive sensors offer extremely high resolution and stability often exceeding that of expensive and complex laser interferometer system. The primary factor in determining resolution in systems electrical is systems electrical noise. If the distance between the sensor and the target is constant, the voltage output will still fluctuate slightly due to the white noise of the system. Mm, it is assumed that without external signal processing, one cannot detect a shift in the voltage output of less than the random noise of the instrument. Because of this, most resolution, most resolution values are presented based on the peak to peak value of noise and can be represented by the following formula, which is the formula of resolution is equal to sensitivity times with noise. Sensitivity is simply the measurement range divided by the voltage output swing of the capacitance amplifier from the formula just now you can see that for a fixed sensitivity the resolution is solely dependent upon the noise of the system remember the lower the noise the better the resolution okay lastly i will explain uh, you can see the figure about amplifier output noise the figure shows the amplifier output noise with 20 kilohertz low pass filter and amplifier output noise with 100 hertz low pass filter it is important to note that some manufacturers specify resolution based on the peak or rms noise resulting in claims that are two times or six times respectively better than peak to peak although an, ex an acceptable method it is somewhat misleading as most users do not have the ability to decipher voltage changes less than the peak to peak noise value the amount of noise depends on the system bandwidth this is because noise 
is generally randomly distributed over a wide range of frequencies and limiting the bandwidth will filtering will remove some of the unwanted higher frequency fluctuations all of mti's equimeasure capacitance system have plug in low pass filter then allow for easy adjustment in the field okay uh, this is all from me i will pass to the ari filman thank you okay that is not new then um in this particular part i will explain to you about stability how to ensure the stability in our system first stability is an important concept so for this part i will discuss about the stability of the system and also type of system based on the stability itself first there are three types first stable uh, the second neutral and also lastly unstable the definition for stable uh, a stable part is a system uh, if the natural response approach the zero as time approach the infinity uh, for unstable a system that is unstable is if the natural response approach infinity as the time approach infinity so the difference between the uh, stable and also unstable is natural response approach to the zero but unstable the response approach infinity so uh, lastly marginally stable a system that is marginally stable if when the natural response neither decays nor grows but remains constant or oscillates between a bound so we can see it did not go to the zero and it also did not go to the infinity but it is uh, oscillate between them so uh, the analysis for the stability stable system have closed loop transfer functions which poles only in the left half plane uh, unstable systems have closed loop transfer functions with at least one pole in the right half plane or poles of multiplicity greater than one on the imaginary axis marginally stable system have closed loop transfer functions with only imaginary imaginary axis poles of multiplicity one and poles in the left half plane So this is diagram that shows the Roos Hurwitz stability Citerion. Sorry. So how to generate the Roos table? Uh, it just have to start it, uh, with division and follow the uh, step that have been given here. And um, it is easy because the value in a row just can be divided by easy calculation divide uh, minus and also uh, what we call citation so next now uh, we continue with Zafrid. okay uh, next we talk about open loop control system vs closed loop control system okay uh, the open loop system uh, is a control system in which the control action is totally independent of the output of the system then it is called an open loop control system a manual control system is also an open loop control system uh, this figure at the top shows a control system block diagram of an open loop control system in which process output is totally independent of the control action 
uh, for the below one, uh, closed loop control system. Control system in which the output has an effect on the input quantity in such a manner that the input quantity will adjust itself based on the output generated is called a closed loop control system. Next, uh, the steady state error. What is steady state error? Okay, steady state error uh, defined as a, is the difference between the input and the output for a prescribed test input as time become infinity. Test inputs used to uh, use for steady state error analysis and design are uh, summarized in the table below. So we can see there are three step, ramp and parabola. Application to stable system. Okay, next uh, we want to talk about the how to stabilize the steady state error. Okay, the natural response approach as uh, since we are concerned with the difference between the input and output of a feedback control system after the steady state has been reached. Uh, our discussion is limit to stable system where the natural response approach zero as time reach infinity. Uh, unstable systems uh, represent loss of control in the steady state and are not acceptable for use at all. Thus, in engineer, we must check the system for stability while performing steady state error, analysis and design. Okay, next. Okay, uh, we talk about steady state error for unity feedback systems. Uh, as we can see uh, in the diagram, that's a uh, block diagram for closed loop control system which is having unity negative feedback as you can see at the RS that is negative where RS is the Laplace uh, transform of the reference input signal. RT, uh, CS is the Laplace transform of the output signal, CT. Uh, test signals. Uh, there are three test signals uh, that, uh, as I say before, it's step, ramp, and parabola. Okay, the given input signal is a combination of three signal step, ram, uh, step and parabolic. The following, uh, that's, uh, let us take each input and evaluate its effect on the steady state error by using this equation. Okay, that is uh, in the steady state error, there is a constant between this uh, input signal, uh, such as we can see at the diagram, it is K, P, K, E and K, A. So the given signal is a combination of three signal step. The following table shows error constant and steady state error values of these three signal and they become an equa equation to solve them. Okay, uh, example using the steady state error constant. So by uh, this table, we, can, we will get uh, the overall steady state error by adding the above three steady state error. Uh, as we can see, this is ESS equal to ESS1 plus ESS2 plus ESS3 uh, equal to 0 plus 0 plus 1 equal to 1. So therefore, we got the steady state error as 1 for this example. Okay, next. Uh, steady state error for non-unity feedback systems. Okay, consider the following block diagram uh, for closed loop control system which is having non-unity feedback system. Okay, uh, by this uh, diagram at the top, uh, we can find uh, the steady state error only for the unity feedback system. So we have to convert the non-unity feedback system into unity feedback system. For this, uh, include one unity positive feedback path and one unity negative feedback path in the above block diagram. Uh, as you can see, it's a, there is a loop uh, below the HS. So the new block diagram look like as shown as this, as the, at the top. So uh, we simplify the above block diagram by keeping the unity negative feedback as it is. The following is the simplified block diagram as the below diagram one. Okay. 
uh, this block diagram resembles the block diagram of the unity negative feedback closed loop control system. Here, the single block is having the transfer function as the equation in the box instead of GS. Uh, now we can calculate the steady state error by using steady state error formula given for the unity negative feedback system. Uh, so it is meaningless to find the steady state error for unstable closed loop system. So we have to calculate the steady state error only for closed loop stable system. This means we need to check whether the control system is stable or not uh, before finding the steady state errors. That's all from us. Thank you.